Thank you for joining us today in episode 82 of the Pool Chasers podcast. As always, our mission is to help educate and inspire in the form of a podcast. On this episode, we had the opportunity to interview Matt and Nick as part of our live tour at our Houston stop. We have admired the way that they run their business for a very long time, and we were super excited when we were finally able to coordinate the interview. We think they do an excellent job on hiring employees, giving them the proper training, and then being able to retain them. We know this is a big issue in the industry currently, so this episode focuses on those three topics. We hope it gives you a few ideas to help your business as well. Please enjoy Matt Golke and Nick Day of Golke Pools. Welcome to your go-to podcast for the pool and spa industry. My name is Tyler Rasmussen. And my name is Greg Viafania. And this is the Pool Chasers Podcast. Houston. What's up, guys? How are you doing? <laughs> cool. Well, thanks for coming out to the, the live stop on the tour here in Houston, Texas. We always love coming to Texas. Everybody's super kind to us, and it's been a good time already so far. So this is a live podcast, so feel free to you know laugh, clap, you know, interact with us if the opportunity arises. So we'll jump right into it. Yeah. So thank you so much, guys, for being with us today. Um, can you introduce yourself to the uh, audience and the listeners? All right. I'm Matt Gokey of Gokey Pools in Denton, Texas, uh, second generation pool company. And we, we build pools, service, uh, have a retail store, sell hot tubs. Uh, honored to be here. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thank you. And I'm Nick Day, also with Gokey Pools, been with Matt for 20 years and uh, currently run our service department, but have done a little bit of everything, our retail store, um, inventory control, that kind of thing. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. And let's give them a round of applause for being here with us tonight. Thank you. So, Matt, can you share with us just the history of Golki Pools? We know it started uh, a long, long time ago. A long time ago. My dad was Gene Golki. He's still alive. He's uh, 84 years old. He uh, came to Denton from Denison, Texas, to go to North Texas uh, State University. And... He went to work for a guy named Burt Moore in the building supply business. And he uh, he decided, well, he graduated college, got a business degree from North Texas, and then he uh, worked for Mr. Moore. And he decided Denton was ready to uh, for its own pool company. So he got with Mr. Moore and uh, asked him if, you know, would you help me you know, partner up with me and let's build some pools. And he did. And uh, they built pools uh, for six years, uh, about 75 pools and concrete pools. And uh, then he stopped building pools. I think he got tired of dealing with contractors and everything. But he still was in the service and supply business. He stayed in that. Uh, and he bought he bought Mr. Moore out from the building supply business in uh, – 1964 and uh, so he had two businesses the building supply business and the uh, pool you know pool service and supply business and so that's that's how he got into it very good and what was that like in the late 50s Do you guys have photos i mean i'm just picturing like wheelbarrows full of concrete <laughs> just dumping it in a hole and you know going to town on it i've got a few old photos i was born in 1962 uh and i have a couple of photos of me in it just next to a truck or whatever but yeah i think they would just back the concrete truck up you know there'd be rebar in and and they'd dump the concrete and then hand stack it and it was thick we've had we've busted some pools out that are 60 years old that he built and i'm telling you they were built right they were there yeah uh, yeah <laughs> they did That's a good awesome. job yeah very good um, so you want to talk to us a little bit about, you know, how, you know, you kind of got into the business? Well, I was born in 62. So my dad had the business, uh, service and supply business. And, uh, that's all I really ever knew. I just grew up working. We had a little retail store, a little trailer and cleaning pools. And so it's really all I ever knew. It's, I, I worked in both businesses, but just being in, you know, uh, school the the pool business worked better for me because when I was off in the summers we were busy so I w would kind of gravitate towards the pool end of it 
And when I was, a, I went to TCU to get a business degree. And when I was a, a senior, I called him, you know, and said, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do. He said, well, I'm fixing to sell this pool company for $10,000. Nick's never heard this story. <laughs> and I'm like, well, don't sell it. $10,000, don't sell that for $10,000. It's got to be worth more than that. Well, I'm just tired of it. And I said, well, just hold off. I, I think, let me just come there and work for the summer. And then we'll see. And so I went to work there in 1984, and uh, of course I bought it in 1992 for a lot more than ten thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> was he insinuating that you buy the company? Is that what he was getting no, at? No, I think he really wanted to get rid of the company, and he was just tired of it. You know, he had another business that the other business was doing a lot better. What was the other business? Building the building supply business that he oh, took okay. over for you know that he bought Mr. Moore out and uh, so anyway that's uh, Nick's never heard that story but yeah we paid a I paid a lot more for it than uh, ten thousand dollars but I still got a good deal and it's been a really good business so I'm curious did you did you buy it because you you liked doing it or you thought it was a good business opportunity I mean you're just getting out of college you know you could have done something else. I liked it. I liked the challenge. I liked the opportunity for growth. I thought it had a lot of potential. Denton was just starting to take off. Uh, so, you know, I liked Denton and I liked being in business and I liked trying to make things better. And so that was a good combination to be in that business. And then you kind of reopened up construction at one point too, right? So and you had three different you had the store, service company, right. and then the construction in, side again. In 1985, my father and I went into partnership to to build pools again and so we started building pools and and then I, I when I bought him out in 92 I bought out you know both companies his half of the pool construction and then the service and supply business I know you told me that you were doing it like three different locations that you guys how was that logistics wise trying to it was difficult but we were just we kept growing and we'd outgrow our building and I wouldn't if I had the foresight we would have bought a bigger building but I thought I don't know let's let's just rent something so all of a sudden we're in three different locations and it's hard to run a business like that mm -hmm. you know and we weren't quite big enough to have a general manager or anything so uh, and eventually we we got into you know bigger buildings and stuff but yeah it was it was challenging for a while was it difficult working with your dad and because I think felt like you talked about this quite a bit at the symposium a long time ago in San Diego where you had to adjust to you know millennials and the younger generations because they kind of expect different things it's just a different generation whereas um, you know when you were working for your dad you know back in the day it was just expected of you to you know kind of bust your butt every day yeah my dad made me he would make me feel like a millennial I mean he was old school <laughs> and uh People were scared of him. He had a good building supply business, and people were scared of him because he's tall, big, loud, deep voice. And, uh, you know, he just believed you worked hard. You didn't you didn't have to enjoy it. You just worked hard, and uh, payday was Friday. And, I mean, he was, he was old school. So, yeah, he made <laughs> me feel like. <laughs> Do you remember a situation where he put you in check? Oh, all the time. Yeah, he was continual. He would you – know, during the day, it was – I was just – I was a hay boy, basically. You know, he was he was a great father. I mean, he's still alive, but it was it was all business during the day, you know. And and uh, he didn't I didn't get any special treatment at all. <laughs> so you didn't say I can't do that. That's my mandated break. No, I can't. No, I can't. I can't <laughs> do it's lunch time. I I can't. It's twelve. No, there was none of that with him. He's old school. Yeah, that's fine. I'd say things haven't changed much. No, no, <laughs> still still the same today. He did. He sold his business in. Uh, uh, about two years ago, uh, and he's he was what eighty two, Nick, and he's still in okay health, not great, but he was too old to be working. But he just I, when, I'll tell you this: when he was when he turned sixty five, I went in and and I said, uh, "Hey, Dad, congratulations! You're sixty five. You know, are you going when are you going to retire?" And I mean, like he looked at me, <laughs> and he's like. <laughs> What do you mean, boy? I'm not going to retire. Don't ever say anything about that to me again. And I didn't ever. And he finally, when he turned 82, somebody came in and offered him a bunch of money, and he 
uh, mainly for his property. And uh, he took it, and we built an office for him down at our place. So we see him every day. He's there for him and my mom come down there from uh, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. every day. And uh, between doctor's appointments, of course, but <laughs> just really to drink coffee and read the paper. So he'll apologize for being late, you know, if yeah. he shows up at 1030 or something. <laughs> you try to keep him away from the new hires just in case. Uh, yeah, he's... He, he's really <laughs> mellowed as he's gotten older, and I'll remind him of some of those stories, and he'll like, I wasn't that way. I'm like, yeah, you are too. <laughs> that that sounds, sounds awful, man. I think all of our dads say that. Yeah, yeah I think so. <laughs> oh, he, yeah, some of the things, he's like, you feed them, and you have a ping pong and a pool table, and I can't believe this. I'm like, well, it's just the way it is now. He's, <laughs> oh, yeah, he must trip out because you've got, you know, we're yeah. going to get into it, but you've got an insane <laughs> facility. But, I mean, was that difficult for you to, because you were you were born into that, mm-hmm. like that, just working hard. That, if you got any job, you just knew that that's what was expected of you. And was there a point where you realized that you hired people and they just weren't doing the job right? And it's like, come on, I'm paying you. That's all. That's all we need here. I don't need to, we don't need company culture. We don't need any of that. You just need to, uh, just need to work yeah you know i just started started seeing things change and and you get you, then i'm i'm not quite the oldest one uh but i'm probably third or fourth and uh, i'm 57 so most people are younger that work there obviously and the younger people really help me see and i read a lot and a lot of business books and and i just started realizing you know i'm not sure everybody wants to work like they used to and I'm good with that you know and a lot I'm millennial to me isn't a bad word I mean I honestly think millennials have it figured out in a lot of ways and that's where they you know they're going to live their life and work is just kind of a way to fund it right where uh you know I think Nick will agree because he knows you know my dad and me and and he's done the same thing he's worked his tail end off where he's like you know I don't I'm not sure this is I think at some point we're going to look back and go, man, those millennials had it figured out. We're kind of now we're going through the cussing them standpoint, you know, like, man, they want to work and they want their own schedule. And yeah, but I think we're going to look back and go, man, I think they have something figured out. So because I feel like at that time, like work was life. If you got to do anything outside of that, that was just something very special and extra. I feel like every story my dad's ever told me is just something that happened at work. Like, wow, that's, that's really, that's, that's a good story. Yeah. And I enjoy it, but it's like, did you do anything else? You know? Nope. Nope. Drink beer. Oh, does it work work. (laughs) Um, So where's Golki Pools at today? me uh, with we're still in Denton uh we've expanded we uh as Matt said at one point we were in three different locations and we had merged into uh, one new building which we, we still have which our retail store is still at and our new pool construction renovations has ran out of there um and this was just till about two years ago we had close to 50 employees and we were running out of a a uh, small building at the time for that size had parking issues. People were having to park across a busy street and, and walk across the street. And we were going through some retention problems, um, as as Matt had described, with with keeping some key people. And and, and so we had wanted to expand and, and get some more space. And and we looked at uh, building a new place. Um, and we had actually bought some property. And we're going to build a, a 10,000 square foot warehouse, but the city of Denton took almost two years to approve the permit. Um, and so uh, construction hadn't even begun at that point. And we, we kind of thought about, well, it's going to take, you know, another six months if we're lucky to build the building. And, um, you know, so this is two years that have gone by during this, this time. And we thought, gosh, we're going to be you know, too big for this 10,000 square foot warehouse day one when we move in. And so we kind of looked around and this building had, had kind of come across our radar before. Um, and it was nearby our current location, big warehouse, lots of parking opportunities. 
and um, we just inquired about it and and got lucky that the owner was looking to get rid of it and things just worked out and we were able to expand and open up our warehouse and and to me that's when things really changed and we were able to really get things ramped up in our service department and and going so did you guys go shopping for a new location after you had read whatever business book you read <laughs> You know, uh, company culture with millennials. We had outgrown our location so bad, and uh, we had. We like knew, a, he were over fifty people there. And we so, just knew that was one of the problems was yeah. the size of the the business that we had. We were parking across the street, across a busy street, probably thirty cars, thirty of our staff members, and having to cross a busy street. And we were just, and plus, I think that's just bad for culture when you're. Our building's probably designed for 10 to 15 people. When you have over 50 people in and out, it's just a tough, it's a tough work environment. So I, we just started going, we got to do something. And uh, we, we were going to build a building and it got delayed, delayed, delayed because of just permitting like we know about with pools sometimes. And uh, then we found that building, like you said, so we kind of hit the jackpot because it was twice, the building that we ended up buying is twice as big as what we had planned on. It's 21,500 foot and uh, it's perfect. It's great. Gave us go. some room to do some of the things that we had been wanting to do for a long time. And about how many service accounts are you guys doing right now? A uh, weekly service about 700 and okay. then we, we have another um, seven repair techs that, uh, that, you know. How many employees? 55, 60, depending on the time of the year. Very good. That's a lot. <laughs> Ooh, sounds like a, a nightmare. It's a lot of headaches. Yeah. <laughs> no, you guys, you guys got it figured out. That's that's really cool. And what is um, what's your role today, Matt? What do you do exactly? They haven't gotten you a little house on the on the an, property. Is this a work <laughs> uh, intervention about me being too involved in the business or something? Is this the whole reason we're here? Yeah, Nick talked to us earlier. Yeah. <laughs> your loved ones are here for you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I've probably been too involved in the business, honestly. Uh, I, I mean, I'm kind of a control freak, and it's just it's been hard for me to to just step back. And uh, I've tried really hard to do it recently, especially. But we have two really good people, Nick, obviously, and then uh, excuse me, Christy Horton, uh, who's been with us 20 years as well. And uh, so they both man. One of Nick manages the the Duncan Street warehouse, the big building, has our, all our service department there, and uh, Christy manages the other. So I meet with them once a week, and I mean, I'm probably it's probably hurt us me being so involved. Honestly, they would have probably they do a much better job at what they do uh, than what I did. I put out fires. I deal with problems. I mean, I do. I do some of our marketing. I do some of our financial stuff, uh, but it's mostly them dealing with you know customers and and uh, staff members as well. Is that difficult, Nick, when he is in you know the zone of control? No, I, actually, I've really enjoyed working with Matt these last twenty years. Uh, we we like to butt heads sometimes. Like it, it's always a good argument. Like, you know, we, we both have good ideas and, and we come to a common solution, I think, and, and work it out together. So and that's something you really have to perfect with time, you know, is, uh, when two people can have different ideas and how you can come together to find a balance to those ideas. Cause especially in this business, you know, you're just trying to, you know, you're throwing paint at the wall, trying to see what, what's going to stick and what's going to work and what's going to look the best, but it can be really difficult and that's probably, you know, the biggest problem is you're trying to fix everything and you're always trying to make things better when, you know, it's always, you know, it's always, things are always changing now. Yeah. yeah. I've been a meddling owner, uh, probably a little too long and, and Nick and I and Christy, I mean, we get along good. We don't always agree, but we feel like it's healthy to not agree sometimes. And, and sometimes, you know, when you make a lot of decisions, you're going to miss on some and I've made some poor decisions at times and Nick has and Christy has, but you know, we don't rub it in their face and go up. Oh, I told you, you should have done it my way. We just go, oh, it's part of it. You know, let's move on. And, and, uh, but they've both made a bunch of dang good decisions. So 
I'm happy yeah. about that. Yeah, must have made some good ones. <laughs> well, we first kind of saw you, you know, out in California at the symposium, like Greg said, and you taught a class about the processes and hiring and, you know, and, and retaining employees. So that's something we kind of want to focus on this episode a little bit. Um, so let's kind of talk about hiring first. What kind of qualities are you looking for for like potential hires? Can you fog a mirror? Yes. <laughs> uh, that's, that's usually question one, right? No. Um, I mean, right now, you know, we are certainly, um, you know, in the same boat probably a lot of other pool companies are with just a, a shortage in labor pool. Um, so we're not getting as many applicants as we want. And so the, I mean, if if it check a few boxes, like they've got a clean driving record and um, we, we do require a pre-employment drug test. And, you know, if they could do that, they're probably going to get an opportunity. And then we're looking for good communicators beyond that to, to you know, work more on, train more, promote. And, and so if they show a little bit of technical ability, plus being a good communicator, we're going to put a little more resources into them. Are there certain things in their personalities that you're looking for that fit in with your team? I mean, what does it go beyond that a little bit in, in like looking for yeah, the right Yeah, I, I mean, we, we certainly want our culture to continue to cultivate and get better. Um, you know, we, we try really hard to, to eliminate all the drama from the workplace. And so, you know, certainly if anybody's in that, you know, if they are in really in love with drama, it's probably not going to work out and they're not going to be around for very long. So. Yeah, that kills the company culture right, right. off the bat. Um, yeah. We've let people go first day because it already started affecting <laughs> the way that everybody else was. Yeah. yeah. We had one guy work for one day, and Greg took him home. <laughs> <laughs> and he thought he was so good. He's like, so how'd I do? I was like, I'm taking you home. Yeah. You ain't, ain't going to be fit here. <laughs> and then, unfortunately, it's gone the other way for us lately. We've had a, a few, um, like, uh, just online job postings indeed or something like that and we'll hire somebody and and you know if they're applying on indeed they're applying at you know 20 different places and so they'll come and work for a day or two and then somebody better will call them or they think it's better and they'll they leave fire us. they fire us <laughs> so, uh. so i know things are different i didn't really think about this until you know tyler's dad which is kind of a father figure to myself as well um, he has a uh, RV park or apartment complex in Mississippi and he knows to use Yelp and all these other different, you know, platforms for kind of marketing and bringing business in. And he's like, dude, that doesn't work here. He's like, I'm having to figure out different things. So he's in the newspaper and like radio and just things that are, we're from Phoenix. It's very, very competitive out there. And you've got to be on social media. You've got to be using Google AdWords. You're doing whatever it takes to get noticed on the first page of anything. Um, do you guys have a little bit of that? Because I don't know much about Denton, Texas, but from what I've seen, it's definitely not Phoenix. So I'm sure the way that the, the places that you're looking for these candidates is a, a different place. Well, I don't, I don't think we found the one place to to get tons of applicants, but we, we try a little bit of everything. But I, I do think like uh, with the Google, you know, reviews and stuff, I mean, not only are we doing those for our customers, you know, to attract new business and, and paint a positive light at Goki Pools, but also with potential applicants, you know, the first thing an applicant's gonna do is look at your website, look at your reviews and decide if they wanna work there. So we think that's an important part of it as well. Right. Yeah, definitely. And I recently heard, you know, somewhere that um, this company, it's not, I can't remember what industry it's in, but they like to find people from that work at Discount Tire. There are certain places like Discount Tire, Costco, that something happens, they're just not quite as happy or you can offer them a better opportunity to be more of a salesperson and you can make more money with them. But there are certain uh, qualities in uh a person that work at those places where they're just really friendly. They got to tuck their shirt in. They've got to have their hair cut a certain way. They're just certain things that this company has already put so much money into, in, uh, into this, into these people. And that's where they really, um, go shopping for their team. That's funny. We, uh, we've done that with Chick-fil-A. We've gotten a few people from there just cause of the good attitude. And he, and we, like you said, we don't hire for pool experience. We hire good attitude, good communicators. That's what we want. And uh, 
I've always gone to this old town, old school tire store in, in Denton, Briscoe Tire, which I love, just because they know me. It's been there for ever since I've been driving. And all of them love discount tire. And so they have, <laughs> they have my son just bought tires over there. They go, you need to go to Briscoe. You don't need to go to discount. Dad, they just, they treat you so good there. I don't know what they do. But, uh, yeah, they, they, they kind of have that same I've actually thing. tried the discount tire route, like, you know, uh, stealing employees from discount tire. But <laughs> stealing? <laughs> yeah. I don't know how else to put it. Yeah. But yeah. It's, it's what it is. But just went out and said it. <laughs> but uh, it seems like the, the guys that work there, like, they love cars so much. Like, taking them out of the car industry is a downfall for them. Like, the, the pools aren't as attractive to them as the cars. So it hadn't worked out real well for us but yeah and that seems like if you could get somebody from a place like that they would need to probably be they'd be a good person in management role because if you go in there most of the people that are at the counter they're just the manager type you, you can tell that they've got big personality good personality they know how to control the store when there's a big line or you know there's just different things going on and they're just consistent and it's repetitive and that's the most difficult thing I saw from the very beginning in the pool business. I'm like, this is going to be a struggle. These technicians are having to clean the same pools every single day. And it's just, it's a, it's a monotonous job. It is very difficult. I don't think that gets talked enough about is that how difficult, you know, that really is. I always thought that things would be better if they could invent like a bubble around a technician that had like AC and you just walk back there, a dog could come and wouldn't really matter. You just clean the pool and go check on the equipment. No bugs, you know, <laughs> if anybody don't, wants to invent that, boy. please do. That would be epic. Don't yeah. you do something like that for during the summer? What do you, you put Laminate tent, you, got a tent, you got tents for the guys or something? Oh, well that's, yeah. That, like well, our repair technicians all carry tents so they can sh set up, you know, shade. <laughs> oh. You know, while they're working on the pool equipment for a while or something oh, okay. like that. And, but no, no, no built in air conditioner bubbles. <laughs> I'm been, thinking like a real <laughs> tent. I'm like, man, you guys got some big jobs. You got to camp overnight. Uh. <laughs> not quite. Not quite. But, we, but we do have free popsicles. In the summertime, we stock the uh, the freezer full of popsicles. We took that. We, did we, we took that it? from them. Yeah, we yeah. took that from them. <laughs> <laughs> we were working on other things, but the popsicle one seemed uh, the most affordable yeah. at, the, at the moment. <laughs> they're they're very inexpensive, and yeah. they went a long big, way. Yeah, they're effective. Yep, yeah. Yeah, they are. <laughs> so, where have you kind of found some of your people? I mean, you guys are in a college town. I mean, I know we talked about like college employment offices and different things like that. You guys have used to find different talent so can you share some of that with us i mean our, our you have? biggest by far is employee referrals so existing employees you know friends and family that's our number one um we, we do offer a, a, an incentive if they stay for six months we'll give them 250 bucks to the, the employee that referred them um after a certain amount of time after six months yeah yeah sorry um, you probably said that yeah no that's okay <laughs> so that that's number one um we certainly use the the college um, career pages type thing, uh, Facebook, Indeed, like I said, it's been a while since we've done a, a help wanted ad in the newspaper, but you know, anything like that, job, we'll try it all. Have job fairs? A few, there's a few in Denton, but they're not well attended. So yeah. gotcha. I want to point out, did you see, did you see Matt write down like a professional, <laughs> 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 write down something for Nick to say and slide it over? <laughs> Who's that? That's a professional he's, podcast movie right he's there. Feed, he's feeding me notes. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> we want to thank Pentair for supporting the show. You know, as a podcast for pool professionals, we know that when you sell products, it's your reputation on the line. And when they are Pentair products, it's theirs as well. That's why Pentair's got your back with their trade grade program, which supports your business and reputation by offering exclusive tools and support for lead generation attractive product rebates and longer warranties, and an unmatched expertise when it comes to accurate equipment selection, setup, and service. So to learn more about how TradeGrade protects, empowers, and helps your business grow, visit pentair.com forward slash TradeGrade. That's pentair.com forward slash TradeGrade, or click the link below. So once you find somebody, you know, what, what does your hiring process look like? So, you know, when they come in, you know, what do you go through the application and your interview process? How does that kind of work? So 
they're, you know, certainly look at the application, make sure we're, they're fitting our needs with availability. Um, like I said, they're going to do a, a pre-employment drug test. Also going to check their driving record, make sure they're eligible to drive for our insurance company if they're going to work in service. Um, and then we'll check their, their background, check their references, uh, bring them in for an interview. All that goes well. They're going to get hired. And then we always... Uh, take the time to to start them off right. So they're going to spend their first full day just in the office doing paperwork, going over our systems, getting the tour of the place. Um, you know, we show them how to uh, kind of find their own answers, give them an employee handbook, everything of that nature uh, before they ever step foot uh, out in the field with, with riding with somebody or anything like that. Do you like it better that they don't have any experience in the pool industry? typically prefer it yes um actually if if they have experience but they don't have a good story like they didn't move from a faraway area they're just trying to leave uh, a nearby company to find something better like that's usually not a good fit for us and they're going to go on the bottom of the pile why are they not a good fit um it's you know, if they're unhappy with their current employer, um, I, I certainly don't like stealing employees from other pool companies. I don't mind stealing them from Discount Tire if they're willing, <laughs> but um, but I, I just kind of feel like that's the right thing to do in the pool industry is is let everybody, um, you know, our, our, our competition be our competition and, and try not to get involved with them. And it, and it seems like... Um, not uh, jaded's a bad word, but they've they've already got a chip on their shoulder. Um, if if they have prior pool experience and are looking for the next best thing, you know what I mean. Versus yeah. if if they had a good story, like you know my wife got uh, transferred jobs and I cleaned pools for ten years and I want to come work for you guys. That certainly would make a lot of sense for me. Yeah, it's really difficult when they form some of these habits from previous pool companies, and there was some of the most basic stuff. Like we, one of our best technicians ever did everything right, but he refused to dump the pump basket every week. He's like, nah, I just, I do it. Like the pool talks to me, you know, like I dump it when it's telling me to dump. I'm like, I don't, or he would leave, like when he change O-rings and stuff, he'd leave the wrappers back there. He's like, oh, that's, yeah, to he let, did. that's to let them know. I'm like, so they know that this has been changed like 20 times. It looks like a trash can back here. <laughs> You know what I mean? But it's just those things that it's like, well, that's how I was taught, you know, five, 10 years ago. And it's some of the most basic things, like they can learn software before they learn some of the, some of the habits that they learned in the field. Yeah. Like, like we said, we're, we're looking for, uh, upbeat people that have good communication skills. And we feel like we can teach the, the pool into them. You know, we can teach them how to, to be a good technician. And do you guys kind of market, you know, yourselves as, you know, having this great company culture, you've got, you can have your car worked on in your shop and get your oil change, you know, done at the shop. You got pool tables, you're going out to games, baseball games and stuff like that. And I know we're going to talk more about it, but is that part of the onboarding process where you kind of, you know, walk them through the facility and kind of. Well, during the interview, I would definitely say we give them the tour of the building and, and that's part of the, the, the sales pitch, right? But I mean, I wouldn't say that's, I don't know, day one part of the uh, improving the culture. But, yeah, we, we, I mean, we don't put it all over Facebook or something like that, trying to uh, attract somebody. But, yeah, but and we'll you guys, show it off. And you guys actually set, like, maybe a certain budget every week or you run them monthly um, when you have Facebook uh, hiring ads or Indeed ads? Yeah, I, I mean, it, it's it's not that much money. Um you know, but yeah, we it don't is if you forget about it. True. Yeah. Yeah. Don't indeed. turn off the indeed. That's a good <laughs> hustle. <laughs> this has been running two years. You're just barely calling me. Uh, $75 a month. Yeah. We, we certainly don't mind years. spending, you know, a hundred bucks plus on a, a job posting ad if we're going to get somebody out of it. That's cool. Very good. So when you're kind of going through the interview process, what kind of questions are you asking them? Again, if you can fog a mirror, you're probably going to get hired as a pool cleaner at Gokey Pools right now. But. And pass a drug test and a driving record. Yeah, those that's, are three things. Are, those are three tough things. Yeah. But uh, no, I, Maybe what, what would you like them to be if, if it wasn't such a shortage of employees right now? What, what were you asking? Well, certainly the, the communication's a big deal. I, I mean, I, I think 
the the technical ability is so small these days, or such a small part of it these days, that the communication trumps everything. And if you're a good communicator, it doesn't it doesn't necessarily matter how good of a repair technician you are, if that makes sense. What signs are they showing you that they're a good communicator? I mean, it's tougher to, to determine. We, we like doing, um, like instead of uh, an in-person interview, a lot of times we'll call them on the phone. And just just the little things, like, I'm, I mean, I'm in the millennial category probably, so I'm, this is going to be a blanket statement, but um, millennials don't use voicemail. Anybody ever notice that? Like... Some of them don't even set up the voicemail on their phone. You would think if you're applying for a job, you would at least set up your voicemail so that you could receive voicemails. Um, so that's that's usually something we look at. Um, but I mean, are to, you looking at their mannerisms, the way they're sitting in a chair? Yeah, how they, they could respond on a, a phone call. But yeah, certainly how they present themselves and and things of that nature. Yeah. Are you checking social media nowadays? Definitely. Yeah. Definitely look at their social media, make sure they don't have anything too crazy out there, uh, criminal history, that kind of thing. Makes sense. Yeah. I like, we, go ahead. I was going to say, we've heard of um, people as well doing um, credit checks as well as, you know, background checks. I mean, this is completely, always looking at different industries because um, there's, in some ways, they're really far ahead in certain things, but when they have a good, you know, uh, you know, good credit, they're more likely to kind of be, you know, uh, you know, a better person in general, responsible, I guess you'd say. Yeah, we run a background check, but I don't think it involves a uh, credit check, but that's, that's a good idea. It probably goes hand in hand, like you say, responsibility. Do the technicians understand like how, how important their job is? Because I think it's a pretty serious job, and I don't think that gets talked about like enough that they're expected to be kind of a basic, you know, plumber, and you got to know water chemistry, and you got to be able to put all that data into a software that's going to be sent to a client, it's going to be sent back to your office, so that you can keep tabs and be able to run reports on, you know, how many chemicals you're using, how much that's cost, and you're able to do the analysis. So, do they understand kind of, you know? how vital they are we we actually have a training class um uh, we somewhat borrowed it but it uh, blame it on the pool tech we have a little little seminar part of their new hire process <laughs> i like that and we we go through everything that might be considered their fault and i mean we certainly talk about how you could ruin a you know ten or twenty thousand dollar pool interior finish by not keeping the ph and alkalinity right and and try to to uh focus on the importance of that and and what their responsibility in that role is. Very nice. I like how you guys also do like a you inform them if they don't get the job right. Correct. Yeah. yeah. How do you how do you guys do that? That's kind of different than what I've heard before. But if if any application that gets turned in, if if they're uh, for whatever reason we're not going to be able to hire them, you know maybe their driving record didn't work out or availability, we'll immediately send them a no letter. So they'll get a letter from us that you know says they. Um, didn't get the the job. If like we, a letter in the mail. Uh huh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I know. I know what that is. I'm just making sure. You know what the mail is. Greg? <laughs> <laughs> you put a stamp on <laughs> something. And if if we bring them in for an interview and it doesn't work out, they'll actually get a phone call um, from the person that interviewed them and and let them know that they didn't you know get a job offer. Yeah. Do you explain why or do they ask? Something? We try not to. If they ask, we'll try to to help them out a little bit. Um, and, and coach them up for maybe next time, but um, just so we don't get sued, we try not to be too specific on on the reason. Just we found a better candidate. Right. Sure. So. That's a really good move. I mean, that's protecting uh, Golki's reputation as well. Mm -hmm. You know, that, man, I applied. They kind of, you know, you don't want them to get a bad taste in their mouth where it's like they wasted my time. I came out there. And they couldn't even tell me if I was a good fit or not. But we built send pools. A letter. Yeah, we built pools for applicant, you know, one time applicants and that get got a letter and I Nick will confirm this, but multiple times I've had people come up and go, you know, you sent my my husband applied at sixty eight places and not a single person responded and you you responded. You sent a letter and I really appreciate it. Although he didn't get the job. They're happy they got the no letter. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Because they, they, they take the time to fill out an application. The least we can do is let them know that they're no longer a candidate. I mean, 
right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's it's not that difficult. And they're not waiting to waiting around. Right. You know, if you know, in the situation like you said earlier, where you know they get a call from somebody else and take another job, they know they're not going to get your job. So if they applied somewhere else, they can take it. That's cool. Another thing you guys do is like perform exit interviews, which I thought was a cool part of. I'm sure that helps you with the with the hiring process as well and the whole company culture, understanding when somebody leaves or, or you get rid of them, that interview. What kind of what does that kind of process look well, like? Well, we'll only do that for uh, for staff members that leave on good terms. Okay. So if they're you know retiring or moving or something like that, then we'll we'll take the time and and hopefully we're just going to get honest feedback. You know, we'll, we'll yeah. go through talk about their immediate supervisor and, and their role and, you know, what they liked and what they didn't like about their job and hopefully get some real honest feedback. If it's somebody that's left on bad terms, I could probably care less about their opinion. And, and <laughs> You don't want to hang out with them in a room? <laughs> well, no, <laughs> probably don't want to prolong that. <laughs> All right, you've been terminated. Now let's do your exit interview. So it's <laughs> usually not a good move. Have you guys <laughs> ever had any kind of retaliation? Uh, I mean, employees, like that physical or like, what do you got? Uh, I, <laughs> yeah, you can tell there's something churning. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, probably just a few things like uh, maybe some uh, Google reviews or Facebook posts or something on a disgruntled employee or Glassdoor or something like that. But um, nothing, nothing. I mean, we've had violent. people cry, you yeah. know, when we terminate them. And that's hard to do. And, uh, and we had one guy where, uh, you know, I mean, I was scared. Like you could tell, like he, he, it really, really, really bothered him. And you're like, what am I gonna do? You know, yelling. What am I gonna do with my life? And and uh, so, but usually, like Nick said earlier, that they they know. I mean, they've given they're given plenty of opportunities, and and we I mean we try to be good people. We want them to be happy in their job, and be a good fit. And if they're not a good fit, and you keep them. You know, you're really doing them a disservice too. So usually, a, you know, termination like where you're not sure if a guy likes working there and just not a good fit would start out like that. Like, do you like it here? Really like it here? And a lot of times they'll say, not really. And then that's easy, right? You can go, well, let's let's find something for you, you know, that it's maybe a better fit. What do you like doing? And we had one guy that wanted to work on airplanes, and he's or I'm like, what are you doing here? I mean, go to the airport. You know, let's let's find a better fit for you. So we we try hard to be good humans, you know, and we don't like terminating people. But there's some that do that so well, like they've been enabled their whole life, yeah. and we learned that there was like younger people that would work and be like, you do this with everybody, don't you? Like I don't know what to tell you. Like work is hard, life is hard, yeah. and we're trying to set you up for success, but like not going to do this yeah know. we just say you know we don't fire anybody they fire themselves i mean they're given plenty of opportunity to mm -hmm. succeed it's not and, a surprise no so it's it's not that difficult but you know you know your people that you hurt you know it, it bothers you yeah you know? very good so you know once somebody is hired what is the process after that look like like, like the training living? yeah manuals we're pretty I think this is what we do. Uh, we do training, I think, pretty well. We, uh, I think, I heard it from Howard Weiss of Contemporary Watercrafters. You're, he's retired now, and I think David Hall has said it too. But uh, you, that saying, you know, what happens if we invest in developing our people and then they leave? And what, you know, right? We all think about that. I'm going to train them how to take care of pools, and they're going to leave and compete against me. And our philosophy is. What happens if we don't train them and they stay, you know, mm. and that, that would be bad. <laughs> that's, that's, and, uh, that's a good one. So we just kind of, we subscribe to that theory. Like let's be a really good place to work. Let's train them really well. Let's be a really good place to work. And we, we sincerely believe that we're better off with them and they're better off with us. Kind of a one plus one equals three. And hopefully, and I think most of them do see that, uh, you know, we, so we train, we try to train really well. You know, you think about it, we we put these people in front. What does a person spend on their swimming pool in their lifetime? I've always heard 20 or 30 or 40,000. But we do some, we've done some renovations that are 100,000. And we're putting, we have to train our people because, you know, one bad, you know, experience, we could lose that customer. We can't look at 
a customer as a bag of shock or one service call or like it's much bigger than that and so we try to be sure that they're well trained before they get out there Um, so once they get hired though i mean i've seen this before you guys like have a very detailed checklist right that they have every single one of those boxes has to be checked off like cpo uh, the first day they go through uh christy goes through the first day she kind of does our hr uh a checklist of and we can get it to you if anybody wants it uh they're probably 40 or 50 Who wants it <laughs> they're probably <laughs> 40, that was happening. <laughs> 40 or 50 things on it that, that just covers everything that you can think about really that comes up that an, an employee has questions about that maybe we don't cover because we're busy but you know everything we get their social security card at that time their driver's license uh we go through our benefits uh have them fill out all the paperwork, you know, their, you know, bank deposit information, uh, talk about, you know, if you have a problem with your pay, you know, the proper, we go through the chain of command with them. I talk about accidents and first aid. I mean, we talk about a lot of things and, uh, and that helps kind of set the tone that, Hey, you know, we're in a fit, we're a business, you know, we're, we're going to do it the right way. And, and, I think it sets the tone. And they're uh, all for hired on as employees, right? Yeah, the, the yeah. 1099s. No, 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 no. And they all get job descriptions that first day and a policy manual uh, that covers everything. And, and uh, so I think they take it, and we tell them to read it, you know, and, and ask questions. And uh, and then really the training starts. Nick, if you want to go into the training. I was going to say, most, most of our uh, new hires are with our maintenance division, so our pool cleaners that are coming in. Uh, so they, they get a, a manual on their job that's got some common questions, and the uh, uh, the department manager has a has a, a five-class rotating class that he does. Like, he does it every week, and, you know, no matter when they start, they get plugged in, and they keep going through that uh, rotation until they get all five classes done and and those pretty broad topics you know water chemistry and uh, what to do with water problems and staining like I said the uh, blame it on the pool text part of it um, and then during that time they're going to be riding with an ex- experienced uh, supervisor and they're, you know, obviously show them how to do the job. So those are basic training classes before CPO and before all that other stuff. This is in-house. This is in-house. This is our, you know, how we want things done. Um, you know, our, our recommendations for water chemistry. One of the classes is actually about our new pool construction and warranties through the new pool construction. And so they're getting a little bit of information on that. Um, and then the when they're out riding with the supervisor, uh, they've actually got a checklist of all the different things that they need to know how to do. And that supervisor signing off on them as they get it done and, and feel like they're um, well versed in it. And then once all that's been completed, then they're out on their own. Uh, well, not on their own, but they're kind of in charge of the route where the supervisor's riding along with them. And the maintenance manager will check in and, and make sure everything's going well and, and eventually they'll nice. get on their own. So. And they're paid hourly, probably? We do, yeah. During training, they're going to be paid hourly, and then we'll make the move. Um, when they've got every, all their ducks in a row and they're efficient with their time, they're going to eventually move to commission. I'm curious, what do you find is most challenging for um, those techs in the beginning to learn? I mean, I would say water chemistry is probably the the number one thing that we Does focus on. Does it come as on. a surprise when they see a pool or it's just like, do you what? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, the the physical part of it, you know, cleaning the pool, we can usually accomplish that in a day or two. The water chemistry takes a little bit longer. The equipment maintenance is somewhat tough. You know, they're going to see, you know, most pools have the same kind of equipment. There's always a few outliers um, where they just have some some different equipment than they're used to. And that's probably more of like, hey, we just have to run into it and you get to see it and work on it when we get there. Right. I'm going to say to you guys like teach even like how to brush a pool and I I'm laughing cause I, we had somebody 
teach another person how to brush a pool one time <laughs> and he hadn't done it in so long that he was just hitting it hard and he got halfway through the pool and I thought he was going to pass out because he was a bigger guy and he was just dying. He's like, so that's, a, that's how you do it. That's, <laughs> so you, you get it right here. Come get this pool. I'm going to do it. Finish, finish it up, you know, but I'm like, dude, you're going to hurt yourself, man. I mean, there's a, there's a proper way so to don't, do it. Don't that, scare so. these techs away. They see you huffing remember and puffing. They- you got 10 more to go. Hopefully you got it in you. You got to remember these pool cleaners come to us with zero experience, 95% of them. So it's like they don't know a pump from a filter from a heater, which you think, God, that would be a pain. But really, we're able to teach them the way we want it done and go through this checklist to clean a pool. And you know, it's really not that difficult if you just follow a regular routine. We all just go clean a pool because we know, you know, we know how to clean a pool. But, uh, Nick and Nick and his staff do a great job of training those guys from nothing to being able to go clean a pool and communicate and smile and yeah. all that. You really got me thinking. I feel like I would go look for techs at the gym or like on a hiking trail or something. <laughs> like, man, you you're strong. Hold this pole. Listen, can you can you huck it out there like this? Can you do this motion? <laughs> oh yeah. You, you need a job? Yeah. <laughs> so you guys perform, you know, weekly scheduled meetings, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, as kind of continual training, our um, each department is responsible for still setting up a, a weekly uh, training opportunity. So they'll, you know, it's a little more department focused. You know, what they're in day to day, and so they do that once a week. So the instructor, it may be the department supervisor, or maybe somebody else, but they'll have a PowerPoint presentation and eventually do a test on it, um, just so everybody knows the material. And then uh, we also have a, a company-wide meeting once a month um, where we get together, have breakfast uh, for the whole company, Get try to get everybody in the same room at the same time so everybody gets to see each other and give them a little information about what's going on with the company. We also have some required safety meetings and stuff that we, we cover during that time um, and, and just share a little bit of information about how the company's doing and, and what we're planning on doing for the yeah. next month or so. And have you got those perfected where you're not wasting too much time? Because, you know, you can get caught up in some extremely unproductive meetings. Yeah, I mean, we the goal is always um, like 30 minutes, maybe an hour most. 30 minutes is probably ideal. Um, anything over an hour is just way too long. So we, we want to be real precise. And um, if the topic's too broad, like we'll cut it down. So it's within that time frame. Very good. And what are... Uh, I know you discussed some of them, but what are some of the topics? Oh gosh, have? it's yeah. I mean, we got hundreds of them, but I mean, it's it's anything from um, like their department. So it might be you know water chemistry for pool cleaners, but they'll get involved with um, uh, renovations and and hot tubs. Like we just want them to know a little bit of information about all parts of the business, and then we'll do stuff that's you know completely outside of of the the technical side of it. Um, I mean, we'll talk about goal setting and, um, you know, some customer service things, but also personal development. Like we may talk about, you know, how to save for retirement or something like that. That's, that's awesome. So, you know, we talked about, you know, the onboarding and all that stuff. Can we maybe talk about, you know, retention? I know you guys are huge on company culture and you've, you know, gone above and beyond in, you know, keeping people around. You want to talk about that a little bit? Sure. I, I, uh, you know, in my 36 years of doing this full time, I, we've never seen it this difficult to find people. I think you all will agree it's it's difficult to find people to work. Good people. Good people. And uh, and so a few years ago, we just we started really focusing on retention, and uh, it's worked out really well. We want to keep the ones we have, so we don't have to hire a. Uh, Anybody else? Are we are we close to out of time, or have time to tell the little guys mover story? Yeah, we all right. Ahead. All right, we're good. We have a little time. All right. So we noticed that we were not retaining our employees very well, and we even lost uh, a couple to this company in Denton called Little Guys Movers. And I don't know if you've ever moved before. I would hate to do it for a living. And, so uh, me and Tyler did yeah, in high school. Yeah, it is. How, how much fun was that? <laughs> You're still doing it, I see. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I put it right up there with roof and or ditch digging as far as things I do not want to do. But we actually lost a couple of people. 
And Nick and I are like, what? How, how can that happen? How would they want to go over there and work? And this seems like such a better place to work, you know, it's easier work. And so we started paying attention to them. And uh, probably 10 or 15 years ago when they went on our radar. And they started in Denton. Now they have 15. Uh, fran uh, it's not a franchise. It's all company-owned. But 15 branches all over the Southwest. And uh, they've done really well. But what they do is they really, really build a positive culture. We talk to their owners. I mean, they've probably never gotten calls like this. Like, what are y'all doing to keep these people? And they just they're treating them. They were treating them better than what we were really. I mean, we had a little bit of old school in us, and and their their flexible schedules. They, they were you know they played sports together. It was just a good, positive uh, work environment. So so we started doing that more of a like we talked about. You know, uh, what was the first work thing you live? did? Because you guys do so much. I'm just curious, where did you start in that whole process? Oh, probably, you know, food, feeding them. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, company activities, uh, you know, parties, Christmas parties, that kind of stuff, I would say. But I'd just say yeah. company activities, basketball, group, volleyball. Group outings, maybe. Yeah, group outings, yeah. That's kind of where we started. And then it evolved. When we got the new location, we were able to, uh, you know, our building is really – we had so much room in our building. We, I've always wanted to work at a good place. Like, and you read about Google or some of these other companies, you're like, God, what a great place to work. And we don't have a cafeteria and all that, but we have a lot of the, you know, things that, you know, retain people. You know, we have the, the game room with darts and ping pong and uh, pool table. And we have a basketball goal, you know, in the warehouse and, uh, that that kind of got us started on it and you know big tvs everywhere yeah we like the guys to get together and visit in the morning it looks like a sports bar yeah i mean it's they they have a good time we just got through with a uh and each year we have a tournament to see who wins and you know, who's best at that but so we just got finished with that uh, but so we really focused on that and there are a lot of other things we do but we just wanted to be a better place to work and that's what we focused on we were already doing a few little things but uh, so we're constantly and nick is real creative but i mean we do flu shots we nick's a dave ramsey uh financial peace university instructor he teaches them all that we have cpr training uh this sounds really crazy but a couple years ago our guys kind of looked kind of sloppy <laughs> this is one of my favorite stories <laughs> So uh, this is probably three or four years ago. So we we brought a barber in. Uh, every two weeks she would come for a couple hours, and we would just pay her by the hour. It was great for her. And, I mean, our guys, you know, they started looking really good. They didn't want to, you know, they were saying, hey, I need to. Nick's like, hey, can you, you know, get a haircut and kind of clean up a little bit? Yeah, but I'm going to have to take off of work. <laughs> and so Nick's like, he What's came to me, he's like, I think we need to bring a barber in here. I'm, I, I just, I'm like, are you kidding me? You have, <laughs> you have lost your mind. But you know what? It was a great decision. Another one, of, and we did it for a couple of years, uh, probably a year and a half. We did it, and uh, we don't do it now. But if we thought we needed to, we we would, you know. Thank, thankfully, they they've the been hint. pretty clean lately. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you yeah. have your big parade too, like through Denton, yeah. part part of that. What do you guys do? You, you got like load up the trucks with the beach balls and stuff. Yeah, uh, we had a Pinter give us a thousand beach balls. It's a big event. Who uh, blew all these up? I'm curious. Yeah, I did. But <laughs> <laughs> you had help. We, yeah, we, we used the air compressor, so did take but a couple hours. But so, our yeah. excavator brought uh, two, you know, dump trucks and two excavators and the it's a july 4th parade and it's big i don't know ten or fifteen thousand people in downtown denton it is huge and all kids and we had a thousand beach balls just for kids and we didn't have enough and actually our pintar rep came this time and he's like we're getting more beach balls next year this is a great <laughs> event but we try to do we have a lot of things uh, a lot of things like that uh did you and, put a Golki? did you like brand the Pentair oh, beach yeah. balls as well. Yeah, yeah, they did that. I asked them, I said, you don't need to do that. That seems like too much money. Don't worry about that. But no, they did. They they put our logo on them. Did you get a fair amount of 
calls or pool yeah, builders I'm just saying just really it? positive feedback. These are young families. Maybe they're not in the market for a pool yet. We got a lot of positive feedback from it. And I mean, I, I don't know. I can't remember if anybody said, you know, hey, come build me a pool. But I'm telling you, it was a very good event. Yeah. Very positive and a lot of, and we're kind of, we're the last one. It's a, it's probably an hour and a half long parade and we're the last one. And you know how kids love excavators and trucks. I mean, we were the hit. Maybe so, in Denton, in Texas. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. so. Not as a big a deal. Oh, it Phoenix. is. Sorry. <laughs> um. We also do, uh, I mean, some, some with the community involvement, the, um, uh, we offer, uh, a bereavement pool care program for our customers like if they had a, a recent death in the family or a terminal illness or something like that we'll offer to take care of their pool at no charge for a few months i think a lot of the the staff members really enjoy that because they're kind of giving back and they can you know directly see how it affects somebody that you're taking that burden off of them right and i mean what would you suggest for a smaller company that might not have as big a budget but should get started on something like this like, where would you suggest that, you know, they start? I mean, I, I think you certainly talk to your people um, about what they're interested in. And, and anything that doesn't cost much, I think you should try. And, and maybe it doesn't work out. Um, and then, But maybe it does. Or you keep building on it and um, keep investing a little bit more money into it. I, I, I haven't put pen and paper to it, but I, I kind of figure replacing an employee is probably close to $10,000. Um, by the time you lose them and you hire somebody else and all that that you have to go through and train them. Um, so where would you rather spend the 10,000 bucks on getting a new staff member or doing some fun stuff? So. I think feeding them is good. And if you can maybe get with the manufacturer, <laughs> if you get with, a, get with your manufacturer, you know, if you hey, if, can you help us, you know, if we sell, you know, maybe tie some sales goals to it. Can you buy some, you know, whatever meal if you, and have them bring food in. But I think the main thing is just being kind to them, you know, just seeing what they want, talk to them, be kind of involved in their life, ask them how they're doing. Uh, that doesn't cost anything. And you're pretty flexible with their schedules too, right? Like letting, allowing them to work certain days and working around that. Sometimes that. Yeah, we do some job sharing difficult. if we need to, sure. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. It's different than I've heard before. It's hard to kind of work your routes around something like that, but. It's cool you guys allow college students to kind of come in and work when they can. Yeah, we are in a college town, so we do have a lot of college students that work for us. But, I mean, we we have some some unique people. We, we've got one guy who likes to go on these, you know, months-long adventures. So he'll drive his van and across the country and be gone for three months, and then he'll just kind of pop back in one day and want to clean pools again. And so we try to make that work out. He needs sabbaticals from the stress at real time. <laughs> right. wow. That's the secret. <laughs> or maybe he just has it figured out. Maybe I think he has it yeah. figured out. I'm, we're up there working our tail ends off. He's had a good out. time seeing the country. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. That's really cool. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, thanks for sharing all that with us. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you talked about you love to read books, Matt. Can you maybe you guys share one that's really made an impact on you? Boy, it's hard to well, share just one. Bunch, but which book did you read you when you, you know? uh, <laughs> when you made the um, you were learning about company culture? Oh, I think most of my research there was just done online to see what those really big companies were doing. I think a good book, and it's really old, is uh, "Think and Grow Rich." And I'm not talking. It's Napoleon Hill. I'm not talking about. I don't really. I'm not really in them into money that much, so I always tried to remove the rich part of it, but just it's just about being better and making things better. And if you hear these motivational speakers today, if you read this Napoleon Hill book, Think and Grow Rich, these these motivational speakers all got their stuff from that book. I mean it's like it's amazing. You get it all, you don't have to go to any motivational speech just read that book uh I, and, they, I would and they never talk about that book they don't they want to yeah no, i don't want anybody to know where it came from <laughs> but i would say just whatever you feel like you're not very strong in. there's so much so many good books like if you're not strong in financials i mean there's you know profits first is a good book uh there's a lot of good books that you know traction is a good book for you know organizing and running your business uh patriot pools i know is yeah kind of adopted that and how dimbar's done a good job with that 
but there's a lot sorry but i like to read and i think reading has really really helped our business and nick probably gets tired of all my lame ideas but every once in a while one's good it's always always a good nugget yeah what about you nick i, I mean yeah certainly tons of business books um i i mean i personally try to I, I focus more on personal development, I guess, and, and uh, you know, just being kind to people. I, I really like the, the four agreements. Go back to that a lot. I think it's a good good way to live life. So. Awesome. Well, thank you guys very much for being with us today. We really appreciate your time and just thank you very much. You guys run a great company and glad we could share the story with everybody. Thank you. It's been thank a you. pleasure to be on. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Appreciate it. Appreciate Give it. them a round of applause. Yeah, real quick before we go, um, just kind of thank you guys all for coming. We appreciate you coming out, spending your time with us. I know it's late. Um, thank the Southwest Pool and Spa Show for having us. We thank Pentair for supporting the show. Thanks for checking out this episode. If you want to find out more about our guests or the sponsors of the show, you can check them out on the links we have provided in the right up below. We have also provided links to our social media platform, so please follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Our tag is Pool Chasers. If the podcast has brought you any value, please do what you can to support us through our Patreon page by going to patreon.com forward slash pool chasers. And don't forget to subscribe to the podcast to be updated each time a new episode is released. One last thing. If you're not yet in our Facebook group, join it today to be surrounded by like-minded individuals who are all trying to better the industry. Thank you all for the support. We appreciate your time and your ear. See you out there, pool chasers. chasers.